introduce Yang Lei. Uh, uh, so let's meet him. Uh, welcome. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Pak Pong. Uh, can you hear me good? Yes, we can hear you. Thank you. Okay, great. Yeah, thank you very much for the introduction. So, uh, I'm an, uh, my name is Yong Le Prag, as it, uh, introduced by Pak Pong. I'm very interested in uh, dexterous robotic grippers. So, we've been working on these robotic gripper problems uh, for a while, and then providing dexterity uh, for robotic grippers is a long standing problem. And then there have been a lot of gripper designs and uh, papers and developments, but uh, not all the problems were solved yet. So we are trying to uh, tackle these problems using bio-inspirations. And then today I'm gonna show uh, three examples of a bio-inspiration uh, integrated in robotic grippers. Okay, so we have three examples. The first one is elongatable robotic fingers, and second one is delicate fabric handling using soft grippers. And third one is hybrid system analysis and control of soft grippers. So all these grippers uh, have some bio inspiration, so they look all different. But uh, we have bio, bio inspirations in common, uh, but the first one has really loose connection with bio inspiration. Only the basic concept has a bio, uh, some bio biological uh, inspiration and then that idea gave us how to design these grippers and the second one is more closely connected to bio inspiration so I can say this is more like biomimetics and third one is about the behavior so we wanted to uh, have the approach of grasping of human hand uh, in control in controlling of soft grippers so I'm going to talk about these three topics hopefully I'm not too ambitious uh, in this workshop. Okay, the first one is elongatable gripper fingers with integrated st structural tactile sensors in under, under actuated grasping and manipulations. So uh, if we look at grippers, the primary, primary function of robotic gripper is to grasp and manipulate objects. And then there have been a lot of grippers commercially available and also uh, developed in uh, the research labs. So basic, grippers are parallel grippers and they have really small degrees of freedom and they only have, uh, can grip simple objects. But if you design a little bit more complex uh, systems, then you can have multiple grippers and then more degrees of freedom. And then we can also uh, have a soft grippers like this. So if you have different objects shapes, then you need to have many degrees of freedom to conform to those uh, objects. But if we simplify the system, then we can use it under actuation. Now, if you have different sizes objects, then you need to have a longer length of the finger. And then you need to have uh, different length, different dimensions of the fingers. But having both of these functions is not easy. So, uh, we thought about how to handle this kind of problems. So if you want to grasp uh, different shapes of the objects and also different size of the ob objects. So we looked at, we thought about the uh, designs and then we found the key ideas from biology. So if you look at the giraffe, uh, giraffe is really long. And then uh, how many neck bones do you think we have? We have seven. Okay, someone told me, uh, yeah, they cannot see the screen. Uh, do you see the screens in Zoom? Oh, uh, okay, yeah, so, okay, yeah, so I'll just uh, continue. So how many neck bones do you think we have? We have seven, but how about giraffe? How many neck bones do you think a uh, giraffe have? So, some may think they have a lot more neck bones, but surprisingly, they have seven neck bones. So this is quite surprising to me. So even though they have really longer neck than ours, but they have the same number of neck bones. So to manipulate longer fingers or finger, finger gripper, uh, gripper fingers, we may not need to have a lot of joints or, or a lot of links. So if you look at this video, 
So even though they have really long necks, they have good capability of manipulating their necks. So it's, it's called the neck fight uh, between uh, giraffes, giraffes. It's quite interesting. And then they have a really great capability of manipulating uh, their necks. So from this biology, we thought about how about just increase the length of the fingers, not increasing the number of joints or the number of links, such as this. And then we can conform to different sizes of the objects. And then we can also have some uh, capability of manipulating uh, different types of objects. So in our group of design, we have a total of 16 degrees of freedom. And then we have a changeable finger lengths. And we have two actuators uh, for each finger. So total, we have six uh, actuators in this gripper. We have three finger grippers. So the elongation mechani mechanism is a slotted sliding joint so for the finger links. And uh, the under actuation mechanism is antagonistic pair of two tendons. And now we have elongatable under actuated gripper, which can grasp uh, and manipulate a wide variety of objects shapes and sizes. So let's look at uh, the finger design a little bit more closely. So we have a flexion region and elongation region. So if we disassemble this finger, we have this flexion region composed of a pulley and axle pin. And we have an elong elongation region, uh, which is composed of just a prismatic joint and simple spring. Now, we, by controlling this antagonist pair, of the tendon cable, then we can make flexion and extension motion like this. We can also have elongation and contraction like this. So modeling is quite straightforward. It seems a little bit uh, complicated, but uh, you have basically multiple pulleys connected in series by springs. And then if you know these geometries and uh, properties of the spring. And then we can simply determine uh, the angle and the length of the finger. So uh, you have an extensor cable and you have a flexor cable. And then with the length of these two cables, it can be determined by the uh, length of the each links and also uh, the angle of each pulley. Now, by decoupling, we can have this sum and a difference to have the uh, expression of only length and uh, the angle. And then we can have, uh, we can determine the length of each links and also uh, the angle of each joint by only having this length of the extensor cable and uh, the flexion cable. So you can have a flexion and you can have elongation and also you can have a flexion and elongation determined by the length of those two antagonistic cables. Okay, so now if you have a longer uh, fingers, you have uh, advantage of grasping large, large objects, but not longer, longer fingers are not always advantageous. You can have smaller fingers to grasp small, uh, small objects. So depending on the objects and depending on the uh, manipulation task, you can control the fingers uh, differently. So now we wanna have a force feedback for uh, better control. So uh, existing manip manipulators and hands have uh, tactile sensors, but those tactile sensors are not suitable for our grippers because uh, the length of our finger elongates and also uh, shortens. So we decided to use the soft sensors using uh, liquid metal embedded microchannels. Okay. Now, if you have soft sensors with liquid metal microchannels and the re resistance of the microchannel is determined by the length and areas. And depending on where you put the uh, microchannels, when you stretch, you have different cross-sectional changes. So using these cross-sectional changes, we can have different patterns. And then even though you stretch uh, the soft sensors, you can have the pattern which doesn't change the resist resistance pretty much. So in this pattern, we decided to use this type of pattern. So even though you have a stretched uh, finger, that you don't have, you, you don't have a different uh, resist initial resistance. So you have a proximal flanks, soft sensor, and then you, oh, sorry. 
Okay. And then you can put uh, soft sensors anywhere in the finger, and then you can have tactile information, even though you stretch or you contract your finger. Okay, now I'm gonna show some, uh, I'm gonna show some uh, control example demonstrations. So we are putting more air in the balloon and then balloon is increasing its size. And then we want it to uh, control the force using the tactile sensors. So the first video is controlling using only joint angles like the traditional uh, grippers. But in our gripper, we can also use link lengths. So you can increase the length instead of controlling the joint. So you can still control the force. Okay, so the, uh, the next one is dexterous manipulation. So in this example, you have a water bottle. And then since you have three grippers, two grippers can grab the bottle and the other finger can open the uh, bottle cap using both extension and flexion. Okay, so this task is difficult to achieve with only under actually grasping, but by using our gripper fingers, it, it was possible. So in summary, in the uh, first topic, we have elongated, un elongated under actually the gripper and the design is simple and in, uh, intuitive. And also we can use a soft sensor for providing tactile information. So this is the end of the first topic. And then let's move to the second topic, which is delicate fabric handling using bio-inspired -inspi soft robotic grippers. So the problem here we wanted to tackle is, can we design a gripper that can handle uh, fabrics really unstructured and undefined, really flappy uh, fabrics? And then there are some uh, gripper designs, existing gripper designs, but we wanted to uh, really make simple and compact gripper. And then we looked at a particular uh, type of fish, which is called the lamprey. Lamprey is type of eel which doesn't have jaws, but they have a lot of teeth around their mouth. And then inspired from this uh, mouth configuration, we designed this soft gripper, which has micro needles at the tip. So using these micro tips, you can penetrate easily uh, to the delicate uh, fabrics, and then you can grasp it easily. So in this gripper design, we have uh, four micro needles uh, fixed in the base of the gripper, and then you have a top gripper area. And now you have a very small area of micro needles, and then you, you can use a vacuuming, and then you can close these grippers. And then by closing these grippers, you can uh, hold the fabrics. Since the micro needle is really small, is the diameter is about 200 mic mic micron. So it, it doesn't leave any mark, and also it doesn't uh, damage the fabric. So as I mentioned, once you engage uh, the fabric with the needle, and then you make the vacuum inside of the chamber, and then the gripper closes uh, itself. And then you can hold the fabric very easily. So as you can see in the video, uh, the gripper can hold the fabrics uh, one by one. And then this is the fabrication process. So we use the molding and casting process. It's pretty straightforward. So I wouldn't go over too much details about the fabrication. And then we did some uh, test about uh, characterization. So as you can see, so we measure the uh, holding force by attaching the fabric uh, to the weight scale. Okay. And now depending on uh, the pressures and then depending on how to grip uh, the fabrics, you have different uh, holding force. Okay. And this is more character characterization results. And then you have, we have a, a holding force up to 1.2 Newton. And then we also measure the, uh, the holding force depending on the pressures too. Okay. And now we have also re response time. So uh, this is the uh, compressor response. And then this is the response of the gripper. So uh, we found that uh, the gripper can uh, close uh, about like a 0.3 seconds or 0.9 seconds. And then uh, if you allow about one second, you can hold uh, the gripper uh, pretty, pretty much completely. 
And we also tested uh, some uh, in, uh, the effect of the needles. And as you can see, uh, depending on the size of the needles, uh, if you have a very small needles, you, it doesn't leave any marks or uh, damages on the fabric. But if you increase the size of the needles, you have different uh, marks and then increase the size. So uh, we found that uh, 200 micro needle was uh, quite uh, a suitable range of the needle. And then the next result is about cyclic test. So if you have different multiple cycles, even though you have 10,000 cycles of gripping and then the performance was pretty much the same. And now we have the integrated system with a compressor, vacuum compressor and computer. And then we can hold, we can experiment this fabric holding cases. So if you look at the left side, we, uh, the left one is uh, using our gripper and the right one is just a vacuum. So if you use vacuum, sometimes you hold the multiple sheets of fabrics because of the uh, holes in the fabric. But if you use micro needle grippers, you have a very good capability of holding just only single fabrics. Okay. And this is the demonstration of different types of fabrics. So we connected to robotic arm and then we used uh, different types of fabrics to demonstrate the capability of our gripper. Okay, then where are we gonna use this gripper? So we wanted to use this gripper in a garment factory and garment industry. So. Still in garment industry, there are a lot of jobs done by human laborers. So one of the, one of the example is numbering. As you can see here, so you have a multiple sheets of fabrics, but you have to put the numbers in each sheet. And then these are done by human laborers. So we thought, can we replace this shop by automated system? And then we use the descriptor, and then we also developed this numbering machine. So you have a numbering device here, and then you have a robotic arm with multiple linkages. And then we have a flapping, flipping uh, device at the bottom for multiple fabric sheets. So the speed of numbering was not really, really fast, but it wasn't that slow compared to human labors human workers. So currently we are working on improving uh, the performance of this device. And also we are trying to integrate this to a uh, more automated system of entire uh, sewing system uh, in garment factory. And then uh, we are also working on sensing of this gripper. So even though we, our gripper has the capability of handling a single sheet of fabric, but sometimes there is error. And then we want to, we want you to know the, uh, how, how many sheets of the fabrics uh, the gripper, gripper is holding. So using capacitive sensing, uh, we can detect the thickness of the fabrics and then we can see uh, how, much, how many sheets were grabbed, picked by this gripper. Okay, as a summary, we have a bio-inspired software gripper and then uh, it was possible to, uh, it was possible uh, for handling uh, fabrics. And then the application is automation of garment industry. Okay, and let me move to the next topic, which is a hybrid system analysis and control of software gripper. Okay, so this is not about design. This is more like uh, about the control. So when you press of something, uh, which you don't have exact sense of size or shape, but you still can gr uh, grasp uh, quite easily because you have a tactile sensing capability. Okay, so in this case, sometimes you touch in multiple places and then you also grow up uh, around and then you try to kind of decide uh, the optimum location and a shape of your fingers. And then you can grasp uh, the objects, unidentified objects. So we thought, can we kind of uh, provide this capability to robotic gripper? 
And then we want you to use a soft gripper because soft gripper is not easy to control and also is not easy to model. So the problem started with object manipulation of soft gripper like this. So in this case, you know there is an object to grab, but you don't exactly know the size of the object and also the location of the object, but you only know uh, the object, object is in graspable uh, range. So then how do you control this soft robot? And how do you move this soft robot to grasp uh, uh, successfully this object? So in this case, so we have two soft grippers, just fingers, and then we need to move this soft gripper fingers uh, back and forth to, to determine the right location to hold the object. Okay, so of course we can use machine learning these days, but you need to train and also you need to have a lot of data to have uh, accurate models. But we wanted to use a simple control algorithms and then without having any previous data. So uh, we decided to use a hybrid system analysis. So this is a more definition of our problem. So you have input definition. So let's say this is this wall is the uh, location of the object. And then depending on the location of the object, you need to move with your fingers back and forth. And then you also need to determine how much angle you need to make to hold the object successfully. Okay. And then here we used a hybrid system with four discrete states. So in this case, uh, what is hybrid system? Hybrid system is a dynamical system that exhibits both continuous and discrete dynamic behavior. A system that can both flow and jump. So when you flow, you can use a different differential equation, and then when you jump, a state machine. So you have state machines with three, uh, four states in our cases, and then we classify the states uh, depending on the uh, tests. So first, we need to check if the gripper is contact or non-contact, and then the gripper is pressurizing or depressurizing, and then we also need to find it is staying or approaching. And depending on this state, we can have uh, more continuous models inside of each state. Okay. So using these state machines and hybrid system analysis, uh, we made control algorithms because of the time, uh, I wouldn't go over too much details about the algorithms, but we have uh, experimental characterization results uh, such as this. So we have the system, the actual robotic finger system, and instead of, instead of having two fingers with objects, we use only just a single finger uh, for mirroring image. And then we uh, assumed this movable wall is the object. Okay? And then we, we use the different types of uh, motions. And then we also measured uh, sensor signals using the liquid matter sensors embedded on top of this finger. And then we have only one uh, liquid matter sensors that can detect only uh, the angle of the finger. But if you monitor these sensor signals, depending on the object, the existence of the ob object, you can determine if there is a contact or no contact. Okay, And then using this really simple uh, input signals, we were able to achieve this uh, grasping control result. So in this case, the finger tries to determine where to start to grip, uh, hold. So now you have right locations and then you can hold the object uh, upward. And then this is, so in this example, the finger started from too far away positions and then it is too far and then it is approaching to the object. Okay, so it is pressurizing again, but still uh, too far. So now it is approaching again. And now it is gripping and then test complete. Uh, the next video is if you start, to, if the finger is too close, then uh, it is determining, determining to retreat and then to until you have the right position to hold. So it is still too close. Now, Gripping and the task complete. And now this is 
combination of the uh, previous two cases. So it is too far approaching. Okay, and approaching, pressurizing, and now gripping, but not too close. So this is too close and then retreat again. And now it moves back and forth. And then finally, it finds the right position to grasp. It. So in this case, we didn't use any visual feedback. So we only use the feedback from the uh, liquid matter sensor uh, at, on top of this finger. Okay, so as a summary, we have a soft mimetic gripper uh, made by NuNet Design, and then we have an integrated liquid matter soft sensor for proprioception. And uh, we, this uh, the grasping was possible by hybrid system analysis and control. And then we were able to achieve enhanced gripping performance. Okay, so this is the end of my slides. So today uh, I talked about three topics, which are which has commons in bioinspirations. But these three topics are not necessarily uh, share the same results or the same designs. But uh, I wanted to say uh, we can use bioinspiration bio in different areas of, of robotic reference. Okay, thank you very much. And I'd like to get any questions. Thank you, Yongwei. Uh, are there any questions? We have time for about one question. Maybe I'll ask. Yeah. Okay. Really nice talk, Yongwei. Uh, maybe I'll ask a question. Uh, when you mentioned the sort of section of inspired um, soft robotic hand for, uh, for uh, trying to pick up the compliant object, can you elaborate on how do you sense the compactness? And what kind of uh, sensitivity are you getting for sensing uh, the, the compliant object? Uh, I'm sorry. So there is a little bit of a howling of, uh, in the room. So could you uh, come to the computer closer? Close. Can you hear me now, Yeah. 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 Or it would be clear if you type in. I'll type in my uh, question. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> okay. no, we your sound is a little bit muffled in the room. Can you hear me now, actually? It's, it's, it's still the same. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, now. If you sit right here. Oh, can you, can you hear me now, Yang Lei? Yeah, yeah, it's much better. <laughs> All right. I, I, okay. Cool. Right. Well, yeah. So I can. Great. So it's a very interesting talk, yeah. Like, um, okay. Now we figure out how to ask questions. So I was um, having a question about the suction cup inspired uh, soft hand for manipulating compliant object. Can you comment on specifically how to measure the capacitance and what kind of like resolution do you have when measuring that capacitance? Oh, the capacitance. Okay, so uh, in the gripper, let me move to that slide. So inside of the gripper, we have this electrodes, the flexible electrodes. So it's conductive fabric. And then uh, when, when you grasp something and then you don't have a, a connectivity between these two electrodes, but you can uh, measure the capacitance of these two electrodes. So depending on the uh, number of the thickness of the fabric, you have different, uh, different capacitance. So you measure the capacitance and then if you have some cal calibrated data and then you can determine uh, it is uh, two sheets of fabric or uh, one single sheet of uh, fabric. Okay, thank you. And, and so I see the resolution now in this picture is on the order of picofarad, is that right? I'm like, sorry? What's the unit of the capacity? So, so now I see in the figure that the- Oh, yes. So is the, unit, the unit of capacity here is picofarad. Okay, great, thank you. Yeah. 
Okay, so should we move to the next speaker? Sure. Okay, great. Thank you so much, Yang Lei. I think we are going to move to the next speaker due to constraints okay. in time. Yeah. Thank, Thank you very you much for uh, coming. Yeah. 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 This thing. Yeah. 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 Y